Good morning and welcome to Paul T's World. And in this video, I'm going to show you the three methods that I use to overwinter Brugmanseers. There's an easy overwintering method for anyone in any climate. So no climate excuses for not having one of these magnificent tropical plants in your garden, either in the ground or in a container. I'll show you the three methods with me actually preparing the plants for winter, what they look like during the winter, then the spring, and finally the summer. The reason why all these methods work is because angels trumpet plants grow from a small twig in spring to a full grown plant six feet high or more with dozens of large trumpets by midsummer. The first method is the easiest, but most unreliable, unless you live in the tropics, or maybe at least zone 10. Leave it in the ground and do absolutely nothing apart from mulching. I think there would have been a 50-50 chance of it surviving in my garden last year, except last winter was different. Snow on a number of occasions and frost to around minus eight or minus 10 centigrade, 16 Fahrenheit. The worst winter since 2010. So not a great winter for experimenting with leaving the Brugmansia out in the garden. I'll try again in hopefully one of our normal mild winters. But look at this, I decided to leave this one out all winter. I didn't know it was going to be this cold this winter. I'd be very interested to hear from you if you successfully overwinter your Brugmansias in the ground and what zone you're in and how reliable it has been for you. And the second way is to take cuttings. This is guaranteed with a very high success rate with most types of angels trumpet. It's always a shame to cut back these large plants, particularly if they still have flowers, but winter's on its way. I take the cuttings before the first frosts. It's good fun knowing each of these little twigs could become enormous plants by mid to late summer. As you can see, a cutting can be anywhere from eight inches to 12 inches. That's 20 to 30 centimeters. So it's a convenient size to put in a container of water. I'll show you what I do with the main plant later in the video. The cuttings don't need any leaves as they haven't got roots yet. Brugmansias only flower above a fork in the stem, so I would imagine the cuttings that contain a divide will flower quicker, but I haven't tested that theory. You can really cram in a number of cuttings in each jar. I tend to put them in about four inches, 10 centimeters of water, but it's not critical. I put the jars in a spare room, conservatory, porch, or on a windowsill, anywhere that stays frost free and is ideally around or above 15 centigrade, 60 Fahrenheit. Get into a routine of changing the water, keeping it fresh, particularly if on a windowsill where it gets direct sunlight and the water can turn green very quickly. I do this every other day, every third day maybe. Wash your hands after handling the plants. You don't want to be rubbing your eyes after handling any part of the plant. Keep pets and children away. Small white nodules soon form below the waterline, followed by roots. I love to see the roots starting to grow. The thing about tropical plants is everything happens so fast and vigorously. Leaves start to grow quite soon. You can pot into soil as soon as the white nodules show, or you can wait till the roots are quite long. Basically, whatever you do, the plant will be happy. Some people say pot up as soon as the roots are an inch or so long, as these are water roots. I wait till much later, as it's more convenient in the house. I've had these in the house all winter. They've made some nice roots. I've got plenty of them. Now, I haven't wanted to pot them up in the house. I don't want to bring the soil in the house. So I've left them all rooting in water. And now I think it's time to take them out into the potting shed and pot them up. 
the leaves are really good. They haven't had any insects on them at all, all winter. So really pleased because Brugmansia leaves are very susceptible to insects. So it's almost a relief to get them out of the house, pot them up and put them in the potting shed. So let's do just that. And as we walk past, we can actually see the red Abyssinian banana. Let's see what we're going to do with that. I don't know. We'll just pop them here for the moment. Get them all out here. This is how they look the day I pop them up. I use compost because they need some feed now, but I also add vermiculite or grit as a compost alone can be quite claggy and hold too much water for too long. No plant wants to be waterlogged, particularly young ones with a small root ball. Don't overwater until there are plenty of leaves and roots. It's easy to drown a newly potted Brugmansia cutting. When the leaves are growing strongly and roots showing through the pot, it's time to put it in a bigger pot and start feeding and water well. Once the next size pot has roots growing out of the pot, it's time to pot into 50% horse manure and water well. If you feed heavily from then on, and it's not possible to overfeed or probably overwater, you are going to get the most magnificent large plant by midsummer. The final container should be the largest you have. A half barrel size is ideal. Smaller would do, but obviously will need more watering. You will end up with a five or seven foot plant with dozens of trumpets being constantly produced over the summer and autumn a sight to behold. I water with a full watering can every day and you can also stand the container in a large saucer. The main plant has been trimmed down by taking cuttings. The plant now realises that it doesn't live in the Caribbean and so had better start shutting down and going dormant. It's going to spend the winter in the dark, which is fine because it's dormant and it doesn't need leaves and therefore doesn't need light. I could cut it back further than this, but I want to see how it fares with all these branches. It's a fair way down to the garage. This is the Charles Grimaldi, the one that scents so well in the evening. I'm going to move the container into the garage for the winter. There are no windows, and as the Brugmansia is dormant and has no leaves, it doesn't need light. The soil is fairly wet after the autumn rains, so I don't water at all through the winter. Unfortunately, my garage isn't attached to the house, so it's going to be fairly cold. I've found it stays at around 5 to 8 centigrade, 40 to 46 Fahrenheit, through the winter, and I've never lost a plant. It's the roots that are the most important, so a little bit of insulation around the pot is a good idea. I'll do the same preparation for this plant. I don't know the variety, but it has white and pinkish trumpets. I bought it as a cutting a few years ago. And here is its home for the next four months. Till March or April, depending on the weather. After I brought it out of the garage in early spring, my local woodpecker this is a greater spotted woodpecker. Reckon that the main growth was dead and started looking for insects. What a cheek. The second plant started growing from various places along the stems, so I simply cut off all the dead bits. I hope that I've encouraged you to give Brugmansias a try. And if you don't fancy overwintering Angel's Trumpet, just buy two or three cuttings in April and you'll have gorgeous large plants by midsummer. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and I'll see you next time in Paul T's world. Bye.